It's the start of camping season and it's also May. And you know what May is. It's Lyme Disease Awareness Month. We're out here right now because we're doing a video all about Lyme disease and how to prevent you and your families from getting it. We're not here to scare you away from camping or the woods. We love camping. We love the woods. But we don't love camping. <laughs> well, we love glamping. We love RVing. Yes. We like campsites with our big freaking RV in yeah. it. Yeah. To make this not so fun video a little bit more fun and exciting, we're gonna do a giveaway at the end. So stay tuned, keep watching, and we'll let you know how you can enter to win a Changing Lanes hat. Bam. Stay here, pay attention, don't fast forward. Yeah, there'll be a quiz at the end. <laughs> if I would have known what we're about to tell you guys, I probably wouldn't be as sick as I am today. We are not trying to scare you away from camping. We think you should definitely go camp. Yeah, if anybody should be terrified of being in campgrounds and being in the woods and getting bit by a tick, it's probably me because I already know what damage that can do. True, true. And we decided to go full-time RVing after I'd been sick, so. Actually, part of it was because she got sick. Yeah, this is just really meant to inform you guys and how you can prevent yourselves and your family from getting sick. So if this video can save even one of you from getting Lyme disease or any other tick-borne illness, then doing all this is totally worth it. So obviously we're not medical professionals for those right. of you for those yeah. of you who haven't watched us before or maybe seen us for the first time. But we do have experience that we are speaking from yeah. and the research that we've done, just learning about the illness. From firsthand experience for sure. First, let's just talk a little bit about what Lyme disease is because I didn't know when we first started hearing about it. I had no idea. Lyme disease is actually a bacteria that is passed to humans through an infected deer tick. On the west coast I think they're called black-legged ticks, same thing. These ticks are primarily found in wooded and grassy areas like you might camp in. Or even in your own backyard, so you just have to be careful and be aware. Mm -hmm. Now not every tick carries Lyme disease, so it's not if you get a tick on your skin doesn't mean that you're gonna get Lyme disease. Additionally, one myth about Lyme disease is that it's only in the Northeast. That's where it was found, and we even visited the place called Lyme, yeah, Conne we did. Lyme Connecticut, right? Yeah. We even yeah. visited there just to see this, this horrible, that's horrible where it place. Was, yeah, well, that's <laughs> it's where not a horrible it was, place, but that's just where it was. It's not. It was just where it was discovered, so yeah. that's, that's where the name came from. But yeah, it's been found in every state except Hawaii. That's right. You so, gotta go to Hawaii if you wanna be free of getting Lyme disease. I got it. Everybody in should just go to Hawaii. Yeah, everybody go to Hawaii. <laughs> the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimate that over 300,000 people are infected with Lyme disease every year. That's actually one and a half times the number of women who are diagnosed with breast cancer every year. And that's six times the number of people diagnosed with HIV AIDS. Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, it... it's a lot of people. Dang it, I knew I was going to start crying. I forgot my tissues. Okay. I'm using my shirt. And that number is even though diagnosing Lyme disease is very difficult. In fact, I actually tested negative. We'll talk a little bit more about the diagnosis and why so many are misdiagnosed in just a little bit. The bacteria that is Lyme disease, it's actually a corkscrew shaped bacteria. They call it a spirochete. Mm -hmm. But what happens is it actually burrows, just like a screw would do. It mm -hmm. burrows into any soft tissue in the body. So it can affect any system. Yeah, yeah. Your literally your entire body can be infected by Lyme disease. And that's how the case is with Terra. Yeah. It passes the blood brain barrier and get into your brain, into your soft tissue and your muscles, your joints. Yeah. So I have a lot of neurological issues. It's crazy. Because of that. I'm crazy. <laughs> That's actually a good segue into my experience with Lyme disease and my story. If you've watched our journey at all, you're familiar with the fact that I have Lyme disease, but we didn't really talk about it or how, you know, how it happened or my experience with it. We don't obviously make it the focus of our videos. Despite how I appear in our videos, I'm hoping that I appear energetic and enthusiastic and, you know, adventurous, but in all reality, I'm in bed more than I'm not. I spend a lot of time laying in this bed, unfortunately. We don't show that on the videos because it's boring. It's really boring. Daisy likes it. Don't yeah. you, Daisy? 
And if you've seen some of our episodes, we actually talk about one of the reasons we got the RV was so she could be sick anywhere. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be sick, why not be sick here? Yeah. And it's kind of true. You know, we laugh we can... about that, like you can be sick anywhere, <laughs> but RVing has helped me tremendously, especially with the mental issues that you get after having a long-term illness like this. So it's been wonderful. And on the days you're not sick, even though they may be few and far between, you can be in this a place like this. Yeah. My reality is that there are at least 10 days a month where I can't get out of bed at all yeah. for that day. It's probably higher than that, but I like, to, I like to estimate it on the low end. But every day I'm in bed, sometimes in the afternoons to rest. And if we do have an outing planned, I plan accordingly. I rest all day leading up to it, and then I rest after, and I probably am in bed for the next day. Yeah, and that's why it's a little bit difficult sometimes for us to do as many meetups as we'd like to do or attend as many events, do rides, stuff like that, because it's difficult for us to plan anything too far ahead. We just yeah. don't know. I don't know how I'm going to feel from one day to the next. In 2012, gosh, I think I was probably in the best shape of my life. Mm -hmm. I was buff. I was working out all the time. That's how she lured me in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He got a lemon. Though. Look at me now. All of a sudden, stuff just started changing for me. Weird stuff that had never happened before, to me before. Muscle spasms on the bottom of my feet, on the top of my head, everywhere, tremors, just the fatigue was insane for me. And so that started years and years of testing and trying to figure out what was wrong with me. 20 plus doctors and oh, yeah. a multitude of tests and a lot of tears because nobody knew what was wrong with me. And that's a common story. It's misdiagnosed as a Parkinson's, a multiple sclerosis, lupus, uh, lupus. it's um, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's called the great imitator for a reason. And what really sucks is after they misdiagnose you with all those things, they say, well, it must be depression. It must be in your head. Yeah, I got that one. I about jumped off the table and punched the doctor in the face, except I was too tired to do it. So it's a very frustrating timeline for most Lyme sufferers to have to go through, and it's pretty much the same for everybody. If we had been aware of this and the symptoms and the fact that all these symptoms line up, even though they mimic other diseases and problems, maybe we could have caught it sooner. Like I said, I was living in Florida at the time, so it happened in Florida. And another issue with Lyme disease, if you know anything about it at all, you expect to see a big bullseye rash that's like hard to miss on your body. Mm -hmm. That's not always the case. Less than half of the people that have Lyme disease even remember having a tick bite. Mm -hmm. For me, I did get a tick bite and I did get a tiny small little bullseye rash. I didn't know that's what it was. It was like the size of a nickel. Yeah. And I thought it was strange enough that I took a picture of it, but Lyme disease didn't even dawn on me at all. I had no clue that it was Lyme disease, nor did I even think to think that way. I've been through so many different types of protocols as far as treatment is concerned, and a lot of them made me feel even worse than I do now. I've done numerous herbal supplemental protocols. I've done the heavy, hardcore antibiotics, and I even had a port put in my chest and had IV meds every day for nine months. Like I got four. good at changing, uh, changing dressings dress. yeah. and hooking up IVs. He did and... a great job. You know, I was hooked up to that thing for four to six hours a day, sometimes more than that. And it was the worst time in my life. Yeah, it was bad. The positive thing that came out of that time was that all I could do was lay in bed and watch TV. Sometimes I couldn't even watch TV, I was so sick. But I started watching a lot of travel shows and we stumbled across the RV shows. Yeah, we watched a big time RV. Big time RV and going RV. It made us excited about maybe something for us in the future. Yeah, one day it just dawned on me. I was like, I, I work remote. I can work from anywhere. How would you feel about getting an RV and just living yeah. in it full time? How would you feel about just selling everything and living in an RV and traveling around the United States. I've been doing it for a year and a half now. Yeah, so it got us excited again because, I mean, our life had was just, I mean, he wasn't having any fun. His wife was in bed 24 seven. I wouldn't leave the house for sometimes two weeks at a time. He was there for me all the time and was really my caregiver and Look how pretty this guy is. Think about something else. But I mean, it's not just hard on the person that has it, it's hard for the people that love them and care about them. No, it's and their lives have to change too. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm very thankful. And I'm very thankful that you have a job where you can work remotely. Because 
Look at us now. We're remotely. We're in Williams, Arizona. <laughs> Most people who have Lyme disease also have other infections in their body. And this is something that isn't well known either, but there are numerous co-infections that you can get from that one tick. Yeah, so the tick has the spirochete, but it also has a bunch of other crap in it mm -hmm. because it's a dirty friggin' tick. Yeah, from that tick, I have a handful of different bacterial strains. Having all those different illnesses in one body is going to deplete the immune system. So it's just this whole cycle of crap that can happen. A few more facts about Lyme disease that you might not know, but you should know, yeah. is that up to 50% of ticks in the Lyme endemic areas, which is the Northeast primarily, mm -hmm. are infected. Right, so you got a 50-50 shot of not being infected in the Northeast. If you get bit, if well, you get bit by if a tick. If you get a tick attached to you. Don't forget that ticks can also hide on your pets. So Yeah, check like, them when they come in from being outside. Yeah, especially if you're camping all the time, RVing all the time, or you live in a home, but your pets are outside all the time. You gotta be really careful. There's quite a bit of controversy and controversial topics around Lyme disease. One of them is that the test that the CDC recommends and that most doctors live by mm -hmm. is less than 50% accurate. Mm -hmm. I, I wanna say I read one stat that said it was like 30% accurate, but don't quote me on that, but it's wildly inaccurate. And the reason I think that's recommended is because it's the one that insurance companies will pay for. A lot of it is, be is tied to the insurance companies not wanting to pay for a chronic lifelong illness. Mm -hmm. So they're in cahoots with the CDC. Yeah, the CDC unfortunately. Testing. Yeah, they're in the pockets of the CDC. We're not gonna get into the politics and stuff of it really here, but you should know that in addition to not just the testing being inaccurate, a lot of doctors don't want to deal with people who have Lyme disease either. Yeah, they can lose their friggin' license. The it's CDC's guidelines on how to treat Lyme disease is, I believe, just two weeks of antibiotics and mm -hmm. you're fine. No matter oh, yeah. when you got bit by the tick. And here's the thing, if you do find a good Lyme disease doctor, they're not gonna accept your insurance because if they have to, if they follow the insurance guidelines, they're under a microscope and they're going to be penalized or lose their license for treating outside of the CDC guidelines. There are a lot of support groups and you know different Facebook groups, social media, all kinds of things. We'll put a whole bunch of links in the description below for resources if any of you are concerned. There's also Dr. Richard Horowitz, who's one of the top docs. He has this awesome Lyme disease questionnaire and I think it's like 200 questions. And at the end of it, you tally up the numbers. You know, you can't hold that as a, a diagnosis, but that can push you in the right direction as far as who to go see. Some of the common symptoms among a lot of Lyme disease sufferers are really bad headaches, insomnia. Um, insomnia regardless of the fact that you're exhausted. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. Joint pain, muscle pain, muscle aches weird stabbing sensations and like I said muscle spasms, spasms and, and dizziness, vertigo, memory loss, um, inability to focus. I'm very lucky to have a wonderful husband like him and have this life so I can get out and explore. It's been, it's been great. What I want to talk about is how do you prevent yourself from getting Lyme disease? That's, that's, that's what everybody wants to know, right? Yeah. Sorry you had to wait till the end of the video. Well, <laughs> gotta wait till the end of the video to get to the good stuff. That's right. So if you do see a tick on you or your loved one, get it off immediately. Yeah. Don't, don't just squeeze it. Yeah, don't do that. You right. don't want to squeeze all of the ticks, germs, and bacteria no. into you. You want to grab um, where the tick meets your skin and pull up, and you want to save that tick. Put it in a little baggie or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you can actually send that tick to the tick report center, and they'll analyze that tick, and they'll tell you everything that they found in that tick. Hopefully it's nothing. So all of you RVers and campers out there and people who just like to spend a lot of time outdoors. Yeah, don't go into the woods with flip-flops <laughs> or bare feet. I know that's hard to do sometimes in the summer months. The thing is you have to protect, protect yourself and your family. If you're hiking or you're walking on trails, try to stay in the middle of the trail. Try not to get off on the sides or you know where people a lot of people don't go you want to stay in the middle they're not big you know if you've seen a big tick on a dog that's like maybe the size of your pinky or it's, it's a big fat one these things can be like a grain of, of uh, pepper yeah these tiny. things can be tiny 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 you want to wear long pants long socks wear a hat maybe even tuck your hair up in a hat the ticks like to hang out like on the end of leaves and yeah. grass that's their whole purpose in life right is to hitch a ride and suck your blood mm -hmm. and free yeah, ride yeah and it's a free ride for the uh for the lime on the tick i know there's controversy about deet and insect repellent 
but DEET is going to keep those suckers off of you. That's that's one of the best things that you can do to prevent Lyme disease. Some of the more natural remedies can still help, but they're not as effective in keeping ticks off of you as the DEET is. You want to wear light colored clothing if you can. It's obviously much easier to yeah. spot that grain of pepper on you. Yeah, and do tick checks if you can. Examine yourself, examine your kids, examine your spouse when they're getting ready to take a shower. They'll like it. <laughs> Uh, look for ticks. Look for a little bullseye rash. Look for anything abnormal. You could have a tick bite on the back of your body and not know it. Be aware of your, your condition and if you, you know, start feeling strangely and you mm -hmm. just think, wow, well, I went camping a week ago, mm -hmm. you know, put those two together and maybe go see a doctor. Yeah. Can't hurt. Yeah. And don't forget to protect your furry friends because they can also get Lyme disease, but they can also carry the ticks and give it to you. So go on. They carry the ticks and the ticks give it to you. Yeah. Yeah. The dog won't give Sorry. it to you. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. If your dog likes to frolic in the woods and then come and jump on your bed and sleep with you at night, you might want to make sure that he's got flea protection. Because... Get a dog like ours that doesn't like to frolic outside yeah. the couch. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. True. We're living this pretty cool life, especially for a sick person. It's pretty darn cool. Yeah. So, you know, I mean. If you're going to be sick, be sick everywhere. I don't think that this the full-time rv life maybe wouldn't have been a thought in our mind had i not been sick and that's what i hope for anyone who is sick i hope that you can get out and live life and explore that's what it's about and hopefully you have a wonderful spouse or partner that can help you along the way go out and enjoy yourself but just be cautious and be aware yeah if you have any questions about Lyme disease please feel free to ask me i'm not a doctor but plays one on tv but i play one on tv <laughs> now to the fun part that's right. Here's how you can win. What are they going to win, Tara? They're going to win a Changing Lanes hat. And two koozies. And two koozies. I just threw that in. Well, I was going <laughs> to put them in there anyhow, but it was going to be a surprise. He blew it. All right, so how do you enter the giveaway? It's pretty simple. You take the Lyme Disease Challenge. What is that? What is that, well, you what ask? What is that? It's a take a bite out of Lyme Disease. Challenge. And much like a lot of the other challenges that have been out, it's a deal where you share it on social media. Step one is take a bite out of Lyme. There you go. Oh, here we go. You ready? Uh, no, we just like don't take the whole Cheers. thing. Cheers. Oh no, you bite into that. Mmm. Mmm. Ah. Then you share a fact about Lyme disease. Right, and you can either say it in a video as you take at, after you take a bite out of your lime. You Give can your say, face a chance to recover. Right. After you take a bite out of your lime, you can share a fact either in the video or you can type it out in your social media posts. And we will have a list of facts that you can share. But something like more than 300,000 people report having Lyme disease every year. Mm -hmm. um, it's the great imitator. Lyme disease sucks. That's, that's a fact. <laughs> Next, you pass it on. And what do we mean by pass it on? Well, you nominate at least three of your friends or family members to do the same thing. That's right. And then they pass it on. The idea is to have it kind of go viral. Yeah. Um, there's just not enough awareness, people. There's you got to share this. And I think it's so important, and especially with our audience, with everybody, but especially with our audience. The last thing you need to do for the Lyme Disease Challenge is you need to tag it. And you need to tag it hashtag Lyme disease challenge and hashtag take a bite out of Lyme. But you also have to tag us, That's Changing right. Lanes, in it so that we know that you did it. So tag us on the social media platform. If you do it on Facebook, that's one entry. If you do it on Instagram, that's another entry. If you do it on Twitter, that's another entry. So share it. Share it everywhere. Share it everywhere. We also asked some friends and family to join with us in doing this challenge. So here's some of that. Roll it. Take a bite out of Lyme disease. We're Phil and Stacy from You, Me, and the RV. And we're challenging you to take a bite out of Lyme disease. Mm. <laughs> we're Grand Design RV. Help us take a bite 
out of Lyme disease. Ready, guys? Oh, I call for Awful. This has been a bit of a departure from our normal video schedule, obviously, uh, but we think it's important. We hope you'll take the challenge. Thank you all for watching this video. It's very important to me. It was very hard for me to get through. I think I did pretty good, though. I didn't yeah, cry that only, much. Yeah, only cried a couple times, like yeah. two, three, four, five, yeah. so times. Next week, we'll get back to normal changing lane stuff. That's right. Please click the like button. Please subscribe. If you're just happening across our channel because of this Lyme disease video, uh, we invite you to check out our channel. We go on a lot of adventures in our RV and on our motorcycle, mm -hmm. and we travel the country, and we're gonna continue to do that. Even though I don't feel well most of the time, on the days that I do, we're gonna get out there and we're gonna go have fun, like today. So let's, let's wrap this up so we can get on that helicopter. That's right, we're going on a freaking helicopter over the Grand Canyon today. That's right. How cool is that? And My arms look big? Yeah, okay. man. Issues. <laughs> I got a whole lot of issues. She does, she does issues. <laughs> <laughs> How come she doesn't drive the truck? It's not that she can't drive the truck, it's that she can't drive anything. She's a woman. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's <laughs> good. That's good. I was laughing and then I got teary eyed. You got teary eyed. I'm glad you're laughing. They're crying. I'm glad you're laughing at my expense. It's great. This is a difficult thing. You're welcome. Despite line, we say screw right. line. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that. Right. <laughs> so is that good? Yeah. Take a bite out of line, people. Oh, I heard that. <laughs>